equal to this distance that is a1 plus l so you will get the components from the distributed load then again you have to subtract 1.5 w1 into l from that so you will get the bending moment component total bending moment at this point and where your shear force is becoming zero we already calculated the capital x value there you can calculate your bending moment using that expression no equate the small x to capital x minus 1.5 w1 into this distance that is capital x minus a1 so you can get the total hogging bending moment also. so this is your bending moment diagram so now you have the sagging moment and the hogging moment available so we have discussed two different methods now your next step is to find out the estimate the depth of the footing so depth of the footing is so anyway you know mu is equal to 0.138 fck bd square so whichever grade of concrete you are using so fck you will get if it is say m25 it will be m25 newton per millimeter square so b is also you already know whichever depth so here you can take to be on safer side you can which b you have to take you can take the small b or if you want to calculate if you are taking the maximum bending moment point you can take the bx value and you can find the d value right so d will be square root of sorry yeah d will be square root of mu by 0 0.138 138 fc can be right fine you can get the depth required also you can get the depth required from one day shear check hole as well anyway uh, that also anyway you have already learned that so now another important that anyway you can check when you during one day shear check hole and the important aspect is to get the reinforcement so this is the same methodology as we have been following in the isolated footing design or rectangular turbine footing design or normal slab design so here only thing to be noted is that below the column loads you will be having you will be having the sagging moment below the column loads you will be having the sagging sagging moment and in the middle portion you have the holding moment right below the column loads you have the sagging moment so whatever the maximum sagging moment you have you are getting you have to use that bending moment so to estimate your bottom reinforcement below the column loads and this maximum hogging moment to find the to estimate the top reinforcement required anyway you have to provide some minimum bottom reinforcement and minimum top reinforcement see means see this hogging moment is critical for top reinforcement but in the middle portion also you have to give minimum bottom reinforcement and the sagging moment is critical for your bottom reinforcement but there also you have to give some minimum top reinforcement right so your ASD you can calculate from your IS456 uh, annex G that is in the page 96 or you can go to directly refer your XPC uh, table also uh, you know that after that after calculation of the reinforcement required anyway you have to uh, decide which diameter bar and based on the uh, length you can decide upon what is the uh, spacing of bar to be provided right then you have to do your one way shear check and for one way shear check you have to take from the face of the column at a distance of d the same procedure okay, at a distance of d from the face of the column that will be your critical then you the same procedure you have to follow whatever is the VU you are getting there at that point you can get the VU directly from the shear force diagram also you can get the VU and your tau V is equal to VU by VD and you refer to your IS456 and find out what is the permissible stress in concrete that is tau C for M25 uh, I think it is from page 72 or 7172 uh, of IS456 then 
if your toe C is coming less than your toe V, you have to provide additional shear reinforcement or shear stirrups. If it is otherwise, you can even think of increasing the depth also. But if even after increasing the depth, so you see, based on the one-way shear criteria, if your depth required is coming too large, what you can do is you can keep the depth to be as whatever you obtained from the bending moment criteria and you provide additional shear stirrups. But two-way shear it is very important. So two-way shear or punching shear. So for that, what you have to do is the punching shear also, see along the column, say if I take one column separately here, punching shear, along the column you have to take a distance of d by 2 in all directions. So in here your this total becomes, if this is b1, your this total length becomes b1 plus d, b1 plus d. Now, what is your BU here? BU here, your BU will be equal to BU will be equal to the column load that is 1.5 into W1 minus P0 into minus P0 into this area. Minus P0 into this area because the there is an upward pressure, the punching shear. No, we are talking about punching shear. So the Column load is acting at the center towards downward direction and we are assuming that the punching will happen at a distance of along the perimeter now, uh, considering a distance of d by 2 from the column face. So you are, the net upward total force will be the net upward pressure in kilo newton per meter square that is B0 into this area that is B1 plus D whole square, right? Then following the same method as we usually follow in our isolated footing, you can find out your tow V considering the perimeter and you can get your tow V value and you can find out the tow C value also. There also your IL456, your page I think 57 or so, page 57 or so. So you can go there and you can calculate the, find out the tow C based on FCK. So your tow C should be greater than tow V. So the permissible strength stress, stress for two way shear in concrete should be greater than the punching shear that is tow V induced due to your loads. Right? So that is about shear check. Then finally very important portion is your transverse reinforcement transverse reinforcement which is very important so here you have to consider a section say at the distance of d or some test would even say 0.75 d towards both sides sometimes you know if you go 0.75 or d from the face of the column towards the left edge that may be greater than your a1 so you can restrict it up to a1 and from here on the right side you have to take a strip, you have to transfer the band width. So here it will be total width of the band width will be. Oh, please remember that two way shear check has to be done for column 1 and same procedure for column 2 also. So it should be same for both. Okay, yeah fine. For transfer reinforcement you first consider the column 1 band width, the band width, the total, this length will be A1 plus, B1 is the column dimension plus D. So consider a bandwidth of A1 plus B1 plus D. Then you can find out what is the total force. No, what is the total force? How you will get that? That will be your P0 into P0 into this shared area is your total force acting there. The total net up, net upward force, total net upward force acting here. And you can also take one See, at the center of the column, you can find out what is the this width. That is already we have calculated your B1 dash. So you already know your B1 dash. And whatever is the column load, see whatever is the column load. So here you need not consider the previous P0. Sorry, you forget about the previous P0. Here we are considering only a bandwidth of this strength. 
So your P naught, your new P naught here will be equal to 1.5 W1 divided by area of the shader portion. That is your P naught here. 1.5 W1 divided by area of the shader portion. That is your P naught here. Now if you want, see for the transverse reinforcement, you have to see from this direction and you have to take a moment from the face of the column. The moment is critical at the face of the column, right? So at the if you want to calculate the moment at the face of the column, so you should know what is the W in kilonewton per meter along this direction, along this direction. So that you will get. So that will be once you have your P naught and the total area you have already estimated. So once you have your P naught, so your W along this direction will be this P naught. So your W will be equal to W will be equal to whatever P naught you have calculated multiplied with the this distance multiplied with this distance so that is your a1 plus b1 plus d so you have the uh, uniform really distributed load right uniformly you have the uniformly distributed load across this length so fine then you can get uh, take your moment how you we used to take moment moment is equal to whatever is the uh, e not into your here a1 plus b1 plus d into your if you have a cantilever no if you have a cantilever if you have a cantilever it is if this is w your moment is w and if this is x it is w x square by 2 right so you have to Take this as your x. So this x here it will be c. What will be the x? This x value it will be nothing but b1 minus small b1, b1 minus small b1. Right? So you have to take this as the x and x square by 2. So it will be into b1 minus b1. By 2 is your x. Square. Again divided by 2. So if you simplify it becomes b0 into a1 plus b1 plus d into b0 minus b1 square by this becomes 4 and so b0 minus b1 square by b. So you get your moment here based on that moment so your depth you know you need not calculate again because whatever is the depth you calculated for the longitudinal uh, direction so based on the moment along the longitudinal direction that moment, uh, depth is your critical and your transverse reinforcement will come above that so just uh, that depth will be whatever depth you calculated based on the longitudinal moment minus half of the band diameter so based on this m you have to calculate the ASP required ASP required in the transverse direction along this bandwidth. So that is also again AS456 page 96. So similarly you have to do the analysis for the column 2 bandwidth also. And in the center you have to provide some minimum transverse reinforcement. So I have tried to confine the I have not gone into the details of this ASP calculation or one way shear check or two way shear check only because it is very similar to rectangular combined footing only where there is some uh, advanced difference is there so that only I have highlighted so I hope you have uh, clearly understood if you have any doubt please uh, you can write to me say at my email address Sri Valsa at the rate N18K dot Thank you. All the best.